Translation and performed by the Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Nanda Swami Shiva Prabhupada. My dear King, talks of the relationship between the master and the servant, the king and the subject, and so forth, are simply talks about material activities. People interested in material activities, which are expounded in the Vedas, are intent on performing material sacrifices and placing faith in their material activities, which helps people spiritually, spiritual advancement is definitely not manifest. Report. In this verse, two words are significant, Veda Bhada and Tapu Bhada. According to Bhagavad Gita, those who are simply attached to the Vedas do not understand the purpose of the Vedas. Our Veda or the Vedanta Sutra are called Veda Bhara Rata. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation of heavenly plants, resulting in birth, power, and so forth. He is desirous of sense gratification and opium life. They say there's nothing more than this. Bhagavad Gita 2, 42 and 43. The Vedanta, the Veda Bhara, followers of the Vedas, are generally inclined to karma karma, performance of sacrifice according to Vedic injunction. They are thereby devoted to heavenly planetary systems. They generally practice the chapter master system. Aksham ha ba chatramasya yajya sukritam bhavanti. One of one's chatramasya yajya becomes pious. If becoming pious, one may be born to the heavenly planetary systems. Urdhva tachanti sattva staha. Some of the followers of the Vedas are attached to Karma Khanda, the food of activity of the Vedas, in order to be rewarded to a higher standard of life. Others argue that this is not the purpose of the Vedas. In this material world, in this world, someone may become very highly elevated by t taking birth in an aristocratic family, by being well educated, beautiful, or rich, or very rich. These are gifts for pious activities. We may get these various worldly facilities in the next life and may take birth in the heavenly planets. But all this eventually, all this will eventually be finished. Chene punye marcha lokam ishanti. Bhagavad Gita 9.21 And the stock of pious activities <coughs> is finished. One again has to come to Marta Loka. According to the Vedic injunction, the performance of bias activities is not really the object of the Vedas. The object of the Vedas is explained in Bhagavad Gita. Vedais cha savira ham The object of the Vedas is to understand Krishna, the Supreme Person, our God. Those are Veda Varas are not actually advanced in knowledge. <coughs> Those who are followers of Karma Kanda, from my understanding, are also not perfect. In the Vedas, the worship of them, different demigods, performance of sacrifice are certainly mentioned, but such worship is inferior because the worshippers do not know the ultimate goal is Vishnu. The Devi do Swarga Katim E Vishnu. When one comes to the platform of Vishnu Aradhanam or Bhakti Yoga, one has attained the perfection of life. Otherwise, as indicated in Bhagavad Gita, one is not a Tapra Bhada, but a Veda Bhada, a blind power of Vedic injunctions. And the Veda Bhada cannot be purified from material contamination unless it becomes a Veda, a Tapra Bhada. That is, one who knows Tatva, the absolute truth. Tatva is also experienced in three features. 
Ramamaiti, Paramamaiti, Bhagavaniti, Sabyate. Even after coming to the platform of understanding Tatma, one must worship Bhagavan, Vishnu, and his expansions, or one is not yet perfect. Bahu Nam Jamanamante, Yadabam Rajamte. And after many births, one who's actually in all surrenders unto Krishna. Conclusion is, the conclusion is that unintelligent men, the forefather knowledge, cannot understand Bhagavan, Brahman, or Paramahama. And after studying the Vedas and obtaining the understanding of the absolute truth, the Supreme Person I got it, one is supposed to be on the platform of perfect knowledge. <coughs> Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Abhumi Chananda, Sri Adrita Gararar, Sri Vasudeva Gaur Bhaktivinoda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Translation once again, my dear King, the fox of the relationship between master and the servant, the king and the subject, and so forth, are simply fox about material activities. People interested in material activities to expound in the Vedas are intent on performing material sacrifices and placing faith in their material activities. For such people, spiritual advancement is definitely not manifested. <clears throat> we know in the first canon of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Vyasadeva, he compiled all the Vedic literatures. I was feeling despondent, but he wasn't satisfied. So he consulted with Narada Muni, and the reason he wasn't satisfied, he compiled all the Vedas, uh, but he had not uh, delineated on the devotional service to the Lord. He did not explain that clearly. But then he wrote his commentary in the Vedanta Sutra, the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the spotless Purana, which, which clearly uh, describes pure devotional, devotional service. Anyabhila Sita Sunya Jnana Karmana Vita Anukalena Krishna Shnava Bhakta is Rupa Goswami's this definition of pure devotional service. Free from jnana, free from karma. So, before Srila Prabhupada came to America, he tried to establish Krishna consciousness in India and Jansi. He was not successful. Because people in India, they know about the Vedas, they know about demigod worship, and they're uh, not are confused, are not clear about who should be worshipped. Even uh, long ago, the story in the Krishna book and Chaitanya Bhagavad, uh, some sages wanted to know who should be worshipped first Lord Vishnu, Lord Brahma, or Lord Shiva, because they are uh, the uh, Buddha avatars. Lord Shiva is in charge of destruction, Lord Brahma is in charge of creation, and Vishnu Mahavishnu is in charge of maintenance. So they weren't sure who should be, was to be worshipped as supreme. So they asked Brigamuni to please go and find out. So Brigamuni was the son of Lord Brahma. They went to Lord Brahma, and he didn't offer respects to Lord Brahma. Now and then in the Vedic culture, one should offer respect to his mother and father. Even in the early days, Prabhupada told Brahmananda Ragavamuni to bow down to his mother, which is unheard of in America. People don't respect their mother and father very much. 
and they don't even take care of their mother and father. It says in the Vedas, you don't take care of your mother and father when they're old, then you have to go to a special hell and suffer a reaction. Nowadays, when people get old in the West, they, they put them in old people's home, old people's homes, so they let other people take care of them. But in India, still, we, still the family ties are a little tighter now. Still, people do take care of their father and mother. But Brigamuni didn't respect his father, Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma became very angry and wanted to chastise Brigamuni. But he controlled his anger and <coughs> didn't, didn't do anything. So, uh, but then he went to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva was his brother. They were both born from Brahma. And Lord Shiva came to embrace Brigamuni. Brigamuni said, No, no, you can't embrace me. You're dirty. You put ashes all over your body. You wear skulls. You have ghosts and goblins as your associates. You know, what kind of person are you? So Lord Shiva became very angry, offended by his words, took out his trident. I was going to kill Brigamuni. The mother Bhavati, she begged Lord Shiva to not, not to kill him. Then he went to Lord Vishnu and straight to Dreep, where her mother Lakshmi was there, and he kicked Lord Vishnu in the chest. Of course, Lord Vishnu um, <coughs> was not offended. Mother Lak Lakshmi she, be, she was offended. She, she, since that time, Brahmanas are generally not very uh, wealthy. But Lord Vishnu, he was not disturbed. He said, I'm sorry, you came here, I didn't notice you, I didn't offer proper welcome to you. And besides, my chest is very hard. I hope you didn't hurt your foot. And also, this is described in Chaitanya Bhagavad that. Uh, <coughs> Brigamuni was empowered, Shaktivesh, avatar, to, to do this. Otherwise, no one in their right mind would kick a Vaishnava or kick a devotee or kick Mahavishnu. But because he was empowered to do this to prove that Mahavishnu was not disturbed in any circumstance, where Brahma was in, showed the mode of passion and Shiva showed the mode of ignorance, but Lord Vishnu is in pure goodness, so he is not disturbed in any circumstance. Therefore, he came to the conclusion that Lord Vishnu should be worshipped. So, <coughs> this stirred up the doubt, doubts that these sages had. The jelly uh, in the West, Prabhupada came to New York in the West and preach Krishna consciousness, we didn't have a problem with uh, deciding who should worship or uh, we weren't confused about what the Vedas teach because we didn't know anything about the Vedas and we didn't know anything about them and gods. They teach in science and school that there's no life on any other planet in this universe. And they say, well, even if there is life, it's just some amoeba or something, you know, very small. So they don't even know about demigods or higher beings or anything else except what's on this planet due to their poor found knowledge. <clears throat> Therefore, the first followers of, of Prabhupada through the were confused trying to understand uh, his teachings. And Prabhupada, especially in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Bhagavatam, all the teachings, he delineates and makes it very clear that devotional service to Krishna is the main goal. There's Vivriti Marg and Nivriti Marg. Uh, <coughs> Vivriti Marg is the path of material sense gratification and Nivriti Marg is the path of uh, spiritual realization. So here it says that men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words in the Vedas. Pichi, Gurni, Tai, Krishna, Bhavara, Mrata, Shaka. Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas. 
which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets, result in good birth, power, and so forth. The desires to sense gratification, popular life, they say there's nothing more than this. So here in the Bhagavad Gita, text 38 to 53, it's called Buddhi Yoga, or, intel or Bhakti Yoga. Very, uh, using our intelligence and for Krishna. So here, in this purport, Srila Prabhupada makes it very clear well, how to understand the uh, language of the Vedas. People in general are not very intelligent due to their ignorance. Their modes of tax, the food of activities recommended in Karma Kanda portion of the Vedas. This is mainly people in India and surrounding countries. Because in America, very few people have studied Vedas, only the universities where they have uh, course, sorry, you know, departments of India, India, in theology, people know anything about the Vedas. They do not want anything more than sense gravitatory proposals for enjoying life in heaven, or wine and women are available, and material opulence is very common. In the Vedas, many sacrifices are recommended for elevation to the heavenly planets, especially the Yotir, Yoti Toma sacrifices. The fact is stated anyone desiring elevation of heavenly plants must perform these sacrifices. And men with poor fond of knowledge think that this is the whole purpose of the Vedic wisdom. It is very difficult for such inexperienced persons to be situated in the determined action of Krishna consciousness. As fools are attached to the flowers of poison trees, Without knowing the results of such attraction, unintelligent men are simply attracted by such heavenly opulence and sense enjoyment. In the next verse, Bhogai Shra Patsanam, Japita Chaitisam, Jamika Bhudi, Samsido Navidate. In the minds of those who do attack to sense enjoyment, material opulence, the wilder by such things, the resolute determination of devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. The Vedas mainly deal with the subject of three modes of material nature of Arjuna. Becoming transcendental to these three modes, be free from all those duality and all anxiety for gain and safety, be established in the self. All purposes served by a small well, and at once be served by a great reservoir of water. Some of the all the purposes of Vedas can be served for one who knows the purpose behind them. So also in the 15th chapter, Bhagavad Gita, Sabhashami Shani Visto, Atas Matira, Jnana Bhavam Cha. Vedas Cha Savira Aham Eva Vejo, Vedantikrit Eva Eva Cha Aham. I am seated in everyone's heart. I mean, for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgiveness. To all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta, and I am the knower of the Vedas. So Krishna said, Jama Karma Chamedi, I'm Eva Mudri Tatva, Tatva De Am Dunan Yama, Haiti Mama Haiti Suar Junam. One of those who are truth about my activity in the past, past time will not take birth again in this mature world. So, people interested in material activities uh, want to go to heavenly planet. They think that this is the goal, goal of life, and this is the all in all. But, when their punya, when their karma runs out, they have to come back to this material world. We know Krishna Balaram was playing with her coward boyfriends. And the coward boys said to Krishnabhava, well, we didn't get any breakfast today, we're hungry. And please feed us. So Krishnabhava said, you go to these Brahmins, there's some Brahmins over here uh, near Mathura, and they're performing sacrifice. So 
You go to the Brahmins and beg some food from them. They'll certainly they'll give you some food. So the car boys, they went to the Brahmins and they paid obeisances and said, Oh Krishna and Bharama are hungry, we're hungry, please give us some food. But the Brahmins uh, not only didn't answer, but they ignored the boys. They didn't give them any, nor did, they didn't give them anything, they simply ignored them. They were so uh, busy forming their sacrifices, not knowing that the goal of the sacrifices was Krishna and Balaram. And also, this happened to, to be, so the cowboys boys went back to Krishna and Balaram, told them what happened. So, uh, Krishna said, well, when you go uh, asking for alms, when you go begging, sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. It's like the devotees go out on the streets all over the world, distribute books, and sometimes it becomes, it's easy not to go to testify to this. Some days it's very easy, a lot. So many people come and take books and you have a nice day. And some days it's very hard, everyone says, no, no, I don't have time, don't bother me. I'm not, I don't want to go to work. So that's the nature of when you're uh, asking for donations and, and uh, trying to uh, distribute books or collect for Krishna, Krishna. But then Krishna told the Brahman, the boys, the Brahman boys, that you go on to the wives of the Brahmanas. So they went to the wives of the Brahmanas and said, Krishna Bhava, I'm hungry. So the wives of the Brahmanas, not caring for any social convention, said, immediately gathered up all the food stuff in their house and brought it to Krishna Bhava. So, <clears throat> uh, because they had love for Krishna. They understood that Krishna was was the worshipable object, and they they had love almost the same spontaneous love. Radha Bhakti as the gopis and Radharani. So they didn't care about social convention. So a woman is never supposed to go out of house alone without her husband. Anyway, they went to Krishna. They gave them all his food, they satisfied Krishna, and Krishna was very pleased with their service attitude. But then they were afraid to go back home, but Krishna told them, no, you can go back home, your, your husbands will not be uh, angry with you. So when they went back home, and their husbands understood their mistake, understood that they uh, were performing ritualistic ceremonies, but they didn't understand that Krishna was the goal and Krishna was, that was meant for these things. So they were, uh, <clears throat> they actually glorified their wives for their position and they were uh, uh, also wanting to go to meet Krishna, but still they were materially contaminated and they were afraid of Kamsa, so they couldn't go to meet Krishna and Balaram. So that happened 5,000 years ago. Then in Lord Chaitanya's time, Lord Chaitanya traveled over six to, six, for six years after taking sannyas. Lord Chaitanya went to South India and <coughs> defeated all the different philosophies people were having, James, and the, uh, whatever, the Maya bodies, so many different, uh, there's, six different kinds of philosophies. Five of them are impersonalism and voidism. So Mahaprabhu easily defeated all these kinds of people and uh, gave, turned them into Vaishnavs and got them to uh, chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So this age of Kali Yuga, we can't do any of these sacrifices. The only thing we can do to sacrifice this age is, is the Sangatana Yajna. So uh, this was the <coughs> reason for the advent of Lord Chaitanya. When Lord Chaitanya, before Lord Chaitanya's advent, even the people in Navadri were very 
uh, much uh, unaware of the goal of life. They were only interested in performing marriage ceremonies for their daughters and sons and worshiping Durga and Kali and all these other things. So, uh, Advaita Acharya was very disturbed that there was very few Vaishnavs in, in Naradri. So he decided to petition the Lord to come. We worship Shalagram by offering Tulsi leaves and Ganges water and prayed for the advent of the Lord. So then Mahaprabhu advented himself in, in, uh, in uh, Navadri, Mayapur Dham. You know, when you come to Vrindavan, what's the first thing you see? You see a big 40 foot statue of Durga. And Prabhupada condemned this. He said, Who are these rascals that have introduced this demigod worship? You know that the gopis wanted Krishna as their husband. So they worship the goddess Kadyani to get Krishna as their husband. But their worship, they worship the Yoga Maya Kadyani, not the Maha Maya Kadyani. And their purpose was not to fill their sense gratification, but their purpose was to get Krishna as their husband. It was not a material uh, desire. But generally people misunderstand and think that they worship the demigod just to get some sense for sense gratification. So even when people come to Vrindavan, the first thing they see is a big murti of Durga on the, on the road, and they think that, that, that this is mortified to worship uh, Durga. It should be a big deity of Radha and Krishna, because in Vrindavan, it's only Radha and Krishna worship. There are 5,000 temples. Prabhupada said, there's 5,000 temples of Radha and Krishna. That was when he wrote his birth works in 1975. Now there must be more because there's so many more uh, housing complexes and apartments and houses where people have, have deities in worship. So uh, <clears throat> this is definitely condemned when they, they have Durga Puja and the shopkeepers, they worship Durga. You know, so many you know, local people don't even have a proper understanding of our Vaishnava Siddhanta. And Bhakti Siddhanta came to Vrindavan in the 1930s. He, uh, he even asked the local people some simple questions on Vaishnava philosophy, and they were unable to, to answer him. So not only Western people, but even people in Vrindavan are not, uh, unless they have a guru and they're in, situated in uh, Vaishnava Sampradaya, they don't have the proper uh, understanding of, of uh, how we should live our life, what the goal of life is. Here, Prabhupada Lamar has told his father that they be do Sarakati me Vishnu. But this is the goal of life. The one should go to Vrindavan, worship Lord Vishnu, and go back home, back to Godhead. The, the word here used here, Ura Grata Meda, means a material household life. There's the Griha and the Griha uh, <coughs> Grihastra. The Grihastra Ashram is there. From the age of 5 to 25, one can live in the Brahmin and the uh, Guru Kula, the school of the Brahmin Guru. And then at the age of 25, one can choose whether he wants to remain a brahmachari, a celibate student for the rest of his life, or he can get married and live as a grihastra. Grihastra means that you live as a devotee of Krishna and you follow the regulated principles. No gambling, no meeting, no illicit sex, no intoxication. But grihamedi, those are householders who are only interested in sense gratification. They don't know any, they, they, there's anything better than that. So they're working very hard, uh, day and night, people work very hard just to have a little sense of gratification, misusing the human form of life. 
so there are many other points in this group work. We know that Chiyo Prabhupada, when he first met his spiritual master in 1922, he met Siddhanta. At first, he was reluctant to go and see Bhakti Siddhanta because his father had uh, had the uh, had the uh, was his uh, was his duty as a householder. He would feed the sadhus, and daily he would feed sadhus in his house. And Chief Prabhupada had seen so many sadhus who weren't really sadhus. Sadhu means one who knows the science of Krishna consciousness. So many may put on saffron dress and call himself a sadhu. But the sadhu means someone who, by his action, by his words and by his action, you can understand who's really a sadhu. The Prabhupada didn't want to go and see Bhakti Siddhanta because he thought he was another one of those unbonafide sadhus. But when he met Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Siddhanta, first thing he said to Prabhupada, you're an intelligent young man, you should preach this message of Lord Chaitanya to the English-speaking world. Of course, Prabhupada was, was shocked to hear that first time meeting him. And also, he, gave, he argued that India is not is a dependent country. India was dependent was under the rule of the British Empire. So until India gets independence, then we can't do this, we can't preach. The Bhakti Siddhanta said, no, this is a spiritual movement. It has nothing to do with anything material, any political or material arrangements. It cannot wait. We must preach this message of Lord Chaitanya all over the world. So Prabhupada took that, took that instruction to heart and prepared himself from that time on to follow that, to, to uh, carry out that instruction. So throughout his life, Sri Prabhupada uh, studied all the Vedic literatures and even in his household life he was given the title Bhakti Vedanta. Uh, because he uh, was known as a learned scholar, even amongst the, even in the glory of Maha. So, uh, Prabhupada finally was able to come to America. At great difficulty, the uh, determination, age of 69, 70, he managed to get a passage on the Jaladuda cargo ship and uh, come to America. And there in America, uh, he continued his uh, writing and translating Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, making uh, it understood with, with, his, with his Bhakti Vedanta purports the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Prabhupada, uh, if you listen to his lectures, you listen to, read his books, he always uh, quoted from various Shastras, such as Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Brahma Samhita, Nectar Devotion. He would cite various uh, uh, passages to, to, uh, to uh, <coughs> confirm what he was saying. Even though in the 1960s, 68, 69, the devotees were unfamiliar with Sanskrit, unfamiliar with anything, the Prabhupada still did not compromise. Still quoted from Vedic literatures uh, to prove his points. And so we can uh, read Prabhupada's purpose and appreciate how much, uh, how much he, how scholarly he was, and how much he was dedicated to preaching and spreading Krishna consciousness. So in this purport, there's many quotes from many uh, Shastras. And, but uh, the main point is, Vedas Chasavera Hame Vejo 
that the object of Vedas is to understand Krishna, to know Krishna, and to love Krishna. This is the object of the Vedas, no other object. When Lord Chaitanya was in South India, he met the Dharmapadis. They were very proud fellows, followers of Madhavacharya. So he asked them how one can attain the goal of life. And they said, by following Varnashram Dharma. But Lord Chaitanya didn't agree with that. But Dharma Rata Kama Moksha, this is the goal of the intelligent people. But there's the fifth goal, Prema Prabhupada Mohan, that is to develop our love of God. So Lord Chaitanya said no, that this is not the um, process in this age. The best process is Shravaram Kirtanam Vishnu Svarna, nine process of most service, beginning with hearing and chanting. He stressed this fact wherever he went in South India, the hearing and chanting, <coughs> Vishnu Smarna about Krishna. So the most important instruction in all of eight scriptures is one should always remember Krishna and never forget him. So this is a uh, place, Krishna's abode, Vrindavan Dham. You take the opportunity of living in the Dham to utilize that time. It's at 24 hours a day, one should uh, hear Jan, remember, name for all his pastimes of Krishna. We should not waste our time, we should not sit idly, chit chatting about this and that, talking about mundane subject matters, or listening, or checking the internet, this and that, or looking at different things. But we should utilize our time. We should spend our time reading Prabhupada books. We should spend our time listening to Prabhupada lectures, listening to lectures of our uh, the present gurus, so we can become fixed up in Krishna consciousness. We have many the brahmacharis in this temple who also spend their time in this way as much as possible. So this is the uh, thing we should do. We should always try to see how I'm engaged and not waste our time in useless idle talk. Lord Chaitanya told instructed Raghunath Asa Swami that don't wear opulent clothes, don't eat palatable foodstuffs, and don't listen or hear this Ramya Kata or village talk. But always in your mind, Raghunath Asa Swami was running away from home because he wanted to stay with Lord Chaitanya and they kept bringing him back. So he told Lord Raghunath Das, but you act like a normal person, but in your mind, you should think uh, and always remember the uh, pastimes, loving service of Radha and Krishna. So we should also uh, study Srimad Bhagavatam, read the Krishna book, whatever is available to us, and uh, in this way, uh, try to perfect our life and not be uh, attached to material sense gratification or material objects. We should, uh, Try to get free from the anarthas in the heart and become pure devotees of Krishna and go back home back to body. So, Hare Krishna. One question there, the boss. Maybe he asked the incarnation of God. I mean, he knew that he needed systematic uh, training. So, in the Vedas, there's, you, know, you make gradual progress, you don't just jump so quick to the bhakti. So, isn't it that we're uh, avoiding the step gradual process so that we gain strength and development so we can be ready for this topmost understanding? Well, why are we neglecting all the rules and regulations of the Vedic rituals and things like that? He wants to know why, why Vyasa Dev didn't go have a, everyone go through step by step the Vedas first before understanding. Well, I, I don't agree that the Vedas